Early in the morning on a chilly day in February 1988, a worker at a hot dog stand in downtown Ventura was brutally stabbed several times and murdered during a robbery. As crimes go, it was nothing out of the ordinary. And yet, it would become a landmark case for the state of California. Deputy DA Carol Nelson takes up the story. We had a crime scene uh, at which there were no fingerprints that were usable. There was no blood left from the uh, perpetrator of this murder. All we had was hair. We had a clump, uh, virtually a snarl, of hair that had been pulled out by a dying man from the killer. Several months later, the police received a tip that a woman who worked across the street from the hot dog stand, named Linda Axel, had admitted to her family that she had killed the victim, George White. But Axel's family refused to testify. The case was stymied, unless some other kind of evidence could be used to link Axel to the scene of the crime. The DA's office turned to science and a newly developed technology that distinguishes between people on the basis of their DNA, the genetic information stored in their cells. The new technique is called DNA fingerprinting. Ventura County District Attorney Michael Bradbury. DNA fingerprinting is clearly the greatest development, the best thing that has happened uh, to law enforcement and the criminal justice system uh, since fingerprint classification was developed at the turn of the century. Uh, it allows us to identify uh, a person without any possibility of, of a mistaken identification from tissue samples such as blood, semen, uh, sperm, uh, hair, as long as it has a root attached, and so on. Hair itself doesn't have the kind of cells that are needed to do biological tests, but hair roots do. We took the roots from 15 of these hairs that were found at the scene and a blood sample from Linda Axel and had the DNA in both tested and lo and behold it was a perfect match. In the forensics laboratory DNA from tissue samples can be treated to reveal a kind of genetic signature of the cells it comes from. These characteristic patterns of chemical molecules are inherited from both parents and with the exception of identical twins are unique to each individual. The DNA banding pattern is then reproduced on film and looks much like a barcode on products found in a supermarket. The Axel case was a test case for California. It was the first DNA case that was presented and it would either uh, make law for the entire state, which other prosecutors could uh, utilize in presenting evidence in their respective murder cases or rape cases or whatever, or it would set us back, set law enforcement back 10 years if it wasn't handled properly and successfully. The scientific community is no less aware of the controversial nature of DNA fingerprinting. Professional journals are a forum for the ongoing debate and the National Academy of Sciences is currently undertaking a comprehensive study of the technique. In the Axel case, after hearing several months of testimony uh, from some of the foremost experts in the country, on DNA, our trial court judge ruled that the evidence uh, was sufficiently accepted in the scientific community that it should be introduced in a criminal case. The ramifications of this landmark decision are far-reaching, as UCLA Law School professor Paul Bergman explains. This case uh, seems to signal the fact that the scientific community has now spoken uh, that DNA testing is, is generally accepted and therefore rulings like this are likely to spur other courts uh, to follow the same rulings. Despite initial resistance to a new technology, there seems to be growing awareness that the benefits of DNA fingerprinting outweigh the potential for error. Science, after all, is a search for truth. So perhaps the more scientifically sophisticated the legal system becomes, the greater its chance of delivering justice. People occasionally, uh, as we know, are wrongfully accused of crime, and DNA will quickly be able to clear the innocent. So it's a tremendous tool, not only for the prosecutor, but for the defense. I think the future of this technology lies in its accuracy. There's a tendency for people to be a little afraid of this because they think, oh, this is Big Brother-ish, uh, how can people know so much about me? But the other side of that coin is, 
Isn't it better that what is known is accurate? Major funding for this program is provided by the L.K. Whittier Foundation.